Lua has recently been added as an alternative file input and audio source. It lets you easily synthesize your own audio from scratch using sliders from Aussie Render as input and using all the effects previously available for other file types. I'm going to start off this demonstration by creating a new Lua file. I can specify a name here, so I'm going to call this Lua. And this will create this and start playing this on the screen. When you open a Lua file, you can press Edit File and a code editor will appear with the code for the script that's currently playing. You can see this is a very simple script. I've got a lot of comments explaining what's going on, but it's only doing a, a few lines of code and getting that fairly complicated uh, image there. This script currently is being run for every single audio sample that you hear. This means it can be really expensive to run, especially on higher sample rates like 192 kilohertz. So you should try and keep that into mind when writing new scripts. Let's clear this for now and I'll explain everything step by step. First of all, the thing that you need to return from this script is the next audio sample to play. This means you can return immediately something like this. I'm going to put this on multiple lines just to make it a bit cleaner. And we need an X and Y uh, value, which is like the position on the oscilloscope or alternatively the left and right audio channel because that's the same thing. So let's just do something really simple to begin with and just render a static value. So we're going to do maybe 0.5 0.5. And then when I turn the volume up, you'll see it will go to that position. It goes to a value there. So if I put it all to zero, then it's just going to be at zero, zero. But now that it's at, uh, now that I've specified 0 .0, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and turn the volume up a bit, you can see the dot move. So if I move this around, so say I put this at, I don't know, minus one, you'll see it move over to here, which is exactly what we expect. So let's put that back to zero, zero, which is the default, and now it'll be back in the middle. Aussie Render also provides a variable that you can use as a step number or a counter between each uh, sample or call to this script. You can use this as an input into a sine or cos function and play a sine wave. So I'm just going to demonstrate that now. So the variable name is called step. So if I do math.sine step, um, you'll immediately see this line appear, right? And you might be thinking, why can't I hear anything if I can see this image? And well, that's just because this is uh, incrementing every single sample. And so we're getting a very, very high frequency here. It's going to be something like, uh, I don't know, like 40,000 hertz, so way above human hearing range. But as I begin to divide this value, so if I say I do this, you'll start to hear that, right? You can hear that. It's quite a high frequency, not nice to listen to, but this one's a bit more pleasant. And then here, if you've got good speakers, you might be able to hear this is very low frequency now. And here you can see uh, the actual dot moving and even more so here. That's just a really simple one, but then we can make it a bit more complicated and put a cos wave here. I should do step to begin with. You won't see anything at the moment because these are, these are different frequencies, right? But if I start to change this, there we go. Now we're getting to see something, right? And if I make them exactly the same, now we get a perfect circle. So let's change these up a bit so we can get a more obvious circle. There we go. And make the volume a bit smaller so we can see that. Perfect. Right, let's change the frequency so we can hear the net, we can hear the sound, but we can also see a perfect circle. Now that we've got this circle, we can use some of these sliders in the Lua file settings in the bottom left of the uh, Aussie render interface to change uh, the frequency in, say, the Y axis. So each slider value can be accessed with the following syntax. You can access it something like slider A. So that would be the value of this slider. So if I put slider A in here and multiply it by this, then first of all, nothing will change, right? Because we're just multiplying it one by, by one here. But if I start to change this value, And this lets you really easily, just with a few lines of code, start uh, drawing some really complicated laser shoot figures. As you can see here, I'm using math.sign and math.cos, and, and that's because we have access to the full Lua uh, standard library, and so any Lua documentation that you might have used elsewhere, or if you're learning Lua for the first time, it's very easy to learn. 
All of that's in the description and should be fully applicable to uh, using Lua in RC Render. To make this a bit more interesting now, I'm going to add some more terms in the left and right audio sine and cosine waves and mess around with some slider values until I get something that looks interesting. So now I'm getting really some really interesting effects where we're adding uh, extra sine values within here. So we're kind of like oscillating between different frequencies and that changes the phase slightly. Um, and the phase differences between the X and the Y axis cause this interesting image to like sort of flow around. So let's do something similar for the uh, Y axis or the, the cos part. So now we've got like, quite a stable image here and you can hear sort of different overtones of different frequencies all playing at the same time to make this laser shoe figure. You can of course then use the output with the existing audio effects on the right hand side here and for example I can try rotating this image at the same time it's being drawn using the uh, 2D rotate speed and see if we get some interesting like overlaid effects. So I'm going to just change the scale a bit here. So already that looks quite interesting but I'm going to change the range of this slider rotate speed I don't know 100 and increase this even further and see what we get and as you can see just with this like really small amount of code you can very quickly and very powerfully get something that looks quite interesting and quite complicated even though it's just this small uh, thing that's generating it this is just a really simple example of what you can do with lua live coding and as a full demonstration on how powerful this can really be, I'm going to write a more complicated script that renders Aussie Render's default cube, the one that is created when you make a new object file. Um, I'm going to try and make something in Lua that does this same thing. So it lets me uh, rotate the thing and maybe applies uh, a few audio effects to it. And with a little bit of debugging and changing the range of the slider value to be a bit greater, I've gotten this to work. So we've now got the default cube in Aussie Render, but written completely in uh, Lua. And we can control the rotation of it using this slider value. So we can get that spinning a bit. And this is all completely in Lua, being run live and very similar to the actual cube here. So I can change the rotate speed here. And got something very similar running at the same time. Hopefully this highlights some of the things that you can do with Lua and Aussie Render with not too many lines of code. This more complex example is only still around 100 lines of code and the one I showed you before was only two lines really of code. It'd be great to see some of you make some videos about this, generating fractals or making complex laser shoe patterns or even making a whole video game written inside of here. I think it'd be fairly easy to write something like Pong within this. As always, if you have any issues or suggestions on how I can improve live coding or Aussie render in general, just leave a comment, create a GitHub issue, or send me an email. Thanks all for watching.